This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 161 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I'm speaking with Tanya Dalton on how to increase productivity. Tanya is best known for Inkwell Press, which is her planner company, as well as her new book that was actually just named for 2019, one of the best books for businesses, which is called The Joy of Missing Out. We're going to dive into those. This is actually a sneak peek for you guys because this originally was set up as a training for inside my membership site, Mastering Your Influence. And the reason I wanted to give you a sneak peek is because what we do inside Mastering Your Influence is you get a training each week. Most of the time, it is either from me, an expert, or you get a group question and answer where we all hop on via Zoom and you're able to ask questions for 60 minutes. So I wanted you to be able to see this expert training though so that you have a better understanding of the level of expertise that you get when you are a member of Mastering Your Influence. As you heard last week in the podcast, if you are looking to stay up with all the algorithm updates, Mastering Your Influence, my membership site, gives you the opportunity to be able to do that because trainings are happening in there in real time. Whereas this podcast episode isn't coming out until February 9th, the recording actually took place on January 28th and it immediately went into the membership site. So what we have done is since it is the month of February and part of my four part framework that you're going to be hearing more and more about that's in my book that is coming out this spring, Influencer Entrepreneurs, one of the four pieces of the framework is kindness. So this month, I wanted to be able to share some kindness with all of you and offer you 40% off the monthly fee of my membership site. That is either tier silver or gold. The only difference between the two is gold is actually going to get you two 15 minute one-on-one calls with me. So the 40% off will work with the code kindness. We're going to link to that in the show notes so that you're able to get that. But you want to be able to use this because it'll work for the lifetime of your membership. All right, you guys, we are going to dive into how to increase productivity right now. Hi, Tanya. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am. This is a conversation that I have been so looking forward to. I've been reading your book. I have your planner. So will you actually introduce yourself to my audience and tell them a little bit about your business as well? Yes, absolutely. I like to tell people that I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm now an author, which is amazing. And I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is the thing with, with all the things that I've been through, I really feel like that's been the culmination of, of my business because of the experiences of I've had because I've worn all these different hats in my lifetime of teacher, stay-at-home mom, part-time working mom, full-time working mom, full-time entrepreneur, seven-figure business owner. I mean, like it's, you know, all these different pieces of myself that I'm really able to reach women in a multitude of ways because I've walked a lot of their paths. So I started my first business in 2008. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. And just doing, you know, I started a business as a side hobby because my husband was traveling the world and he was doing marketing for Fortune 500 companies. And he would literally be gone for like three or four weeks at a time because he would travel all the way around the planet. And so I needed something that I was doing other than just being a mom. And so I thought, well, I'll just start this little business and it will just be something that I do on the side. And so I just was doing it for fun, selling to friends, maybe friends of friends, but that's about it. And then I had a conversation with my husband that completely changed my life, basically, where he was on the other side of the planet. And I, you know, was telling him all the things the kids were doing. And he said, I'm missing everything. I'm missing all the milestones. I'm missing all the moments. I'm missing being a hands-on dad. And I was like, no, 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 you're such a great dad. You know, it's fine when you come home. But I could tell that was really pulling on him. And so I hung up the phone 
And I stood in my kitchen and I made a decision right then that I was going to grow my business to the point where he could come and work alongside of me, that we would be able to, to kind of create this life for ourselves where he was more at home, more hands-on like he wanted. Now I was at the time, you know, a, a mom with two small children and a husband who traveled for three or four weeks at a time, zero business experience, never even took a business class in college. And yet I set this audacious goal for myself that I was going to make that happen in a year And about a year later, I was able to do that. I was able to grow that business to the point where he was able to really come and work alongside of me, which I loved. It was fabulous. And it allowed us to really choose where we wanted to live. We moved to Asheville, North Carolina. Why wait till you retire to live where you want to live? And so about a year after we moved here to Asheville, I looked at my husband and I go, I love you. I love working with you, but I don't love what we're creating. I don't love what I'm putting forth into the world. And he said, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I have, I have no idea. I have no clue like what it is I want to do. And so that was scary because here I am running a business with my husband alongside of me. So it's our sole income, pays our bills, pays the mortgage, feeds the kids, you know, all those important things, <laughs> checks all those boxes, but it wasn't really fulfilling to me. And so it really was this idea of what is fulfilling to me. And so I had to stop and really dig into what am I truly passionate about? What's really at the heart of my purpose? And so I get into this a little bit in my book, this idea of diving into who you are, really discovering what's important to you. And that's what I did. And I, through that process, I discovered there were three things that were truly part of the heart of who I am. First of all, I'm a teacher. I love teaching. Once a teacher, always a teacher. Like it's always there. (laughs) Even when you don't think you're going to be teaching, somehow you end up teaching. Um, I love empowering women. I was doing a lot of small business coaching, helping other women grow their businesses. And I love seeing those light bulb moments with them. And then I love productivity because that's what allowed me to create this life for myself. So out of these three very unrelated things, I had to kind of create a thread that connected them. And that was Inkwell Press, which is my company that I started, which is a company focused on empowering women through productivity, through products and training. And so we closed the old business, went without income for several months, launched Inkwell Press, and it was basically an immediate success. We were able to scale it to seven figures within 18 months with just me and my husband and one other employee. So I like to tell people, I don't just talk about productivity. I live it. Like everything I talk about, all the strategies and the tips and the systems that I talk about, I truly integrate into my life, into my personal life, into my professional life, into growing my business. And so that's really what what got me started really on this journey of teaching women about productivity. So after the planners launched, I ended up thinking, okay, I want to lean more into the teaching part of that passion that I have. And so I started a podcast. And so the podcast was going really well. And then suddenly the publisher started calling saying, hey, we want you to write a book. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is something I've wanted since I was 12 years old. And then another publisher calls me like three weeks later. And so I was like, okay, This is the continuation. This is another way for me to continue to lean into that idea of teaching and serving other women. And so I wrote my book, The Joy of Missing Out, which came out in October um, and was named like a month ago as one of the top 10 business books for 2019, which is kind of crazy for a woman with zero (laughs) business experience when I started my journey. So what I love about that is that really it shows that it's not you know, what you know, or what degrees you come to the table with. It's really what you create for yourself out of what you're passionate about and really creating that life for yourself where you are focused on the things that matter most. And for me, that means growing my business, but also growing my family and really pouring myself into both of those. I think it's so important the way that you set it up based on your values. Can I ask you, so you definitely had the teaching experience prior to that. So that was one of the jobs. What was the the business that you were running with your husband prior to Inkwell Press? Yes. So I had a wholesale jewelry company. So it was very specialized because when I had my kids, my kids are now 16 and 13. So when I first had my kids, it was for smartphones. So people would say when my kids were little, oh, do you have pictures of the kids? And I'd be like, listen, you're lucky I showered today. I don't have pictures. So I decided to start creating jewelry where I was embedding photographs of first with my children and then other people's children's children's (laughs) other people's children into Sterling's silver jewelry. And so it created these heirloom quality pieces of jewelry. 
And I liked that. I thought it was a lot of fun, but it didn't fulfill the part of me that really, as a teacher, you know what I'm talking about here, that we want to make an impact. We want to make a difference. We want people to, to feel that what we're doing is affecting them and changing their lives. So that was really the, really the big downfall that I had with my previous business. You brought up your planners and that was actually how I found you originally. I didn't know about the book. I was looking for a planner that I felt for me, I need to have something almost hourly planner that kind of goes back to those teacher roots where we'd have those teacher planners and it would say hour by hour. What was the subject we were teaching with our kids? Cause that's how their day ran to kind of give them the routine. I'm very routine oriented person. And as you talk about in your book, that's a helpful thing. Not a bad. It is. It is. It's very helpful. Do you think in creating your planner that your teaching background helped you? Is, was that part of like what you put into the planner with the structure? Absolutely. I totally think it did because as a teacher, you know, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. So a lot of scheduling things out, a lot of blocking and batching tasks, right? Things that we talk about in the book so that really we make sure that we cover the curriculum with the kids and we make sure that, you know, we're teaching to different learning styles and all of that. So all of that I brought to the table when it was time to really create my planner. I like to tell people, you know, even the experiences that you've had that feel unrelated to what you're currently doing, all of that is part of your gifts. All of that is part of your knowledge that you come. And that's what makes you uniquely you. That's your, that's your secret sauce, right? That makes us all unique and different. And so it is this idea of pulling what I learned from teaching, pulling what I learned from growing my first business, pulling what I learned from being a mom pulling what I learned from all these different areas to really create a a planner that was designed specifically for women. Because I wasn't feeling at the time when I first launched that there were any planners out there for women or the ones that were, were way too cutesy for me. Like I was like, I want something that feels beautiful and classic and really makes me want to plan. I didn't want something with, you know, kind of the the kind of childlike drawings or too, too colorful. Like I, I like the color, but then the other stuff out there was all the way in the other end of the spectrum where it was just very plain black and white, maybe one color. So I like to tell people that I equate planning with like a Japanese tea ceremony. You can look at it and say it's drinking tea, or you can look at it as this beautiful ritual that you really look at, you look forward to and you enjoy every minute of. That's what I wanted to create with my planner. I wanted women to look forward to planning, to be excited about opening up the planner for it to be beautiful. So they wanted to do it. And it was part of the experience. I wanted it to be very functional, but it also can be very beautiful so that you're excited about it and you, you want to write on those pages. Yes. And I think you definitely accomplished that. It's something that I, every Sunday, doesn't matter what is happening. I, I grab my planner. I sit down, I look at my calendar and everything gets planned out as far as the projects that are important to move me forward. And we'll talk a little bit about how you talk about your North Star, which, oh my goodness, I know I don't I know I sent you the questions ahead of time, but North Star is like so important to me. It's a symbol that's been in my life probably since I was about 23 and I'm got much older than that now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> more experienced. We'll say <laughs> that, the symbol, the second you said that I was like, oh my goodness, that's something like that is something I look for. I just feel like that's a big piece of it. But your planner is I can sit down on Sunday and it, 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 it is it's beautiful, but it's also usable. Um, plus you, you have different options, which I was mm-hmm. surprised by because you kind of set it up. It's that teacher in you where you, it, what, what's your learning style, right? Like how are you? Yes. Plan? So can you talk a little bit about that, how you have the different kind of almost sections, I feel like. Yes, absolutely. Because you're right. You know, as a teacher, we try to teach the different learning styles. We make sure that because people, different people take information and process information in different ways. And this is what I tell people when it comes to productivity. So often they'll be like, oh, I tried this system. It failed. It didn't work or productivity doesn't work for me. And I'm like, it's not you that's failed. It's the system that's failing you. And, and because so often it's this, this rigid system and we're expected to wrap our lives around it. It's impossible to really make work with real everyday life that needs flexibility, that needs grace. And so instead, let's have you and your priorities front and center. Let's create the system and wrap it around you. Let's customize it so it plays to your strengths 
and it plays to your weaknesses. Both are really important because that's how we become successful. So with my planners, I really wanted to make it so it was customizable so that you could pick and choose what really works for you. So some people really enjoy a vertical planning. They like it because it feels like a list and that really works for them. Some people like to plan horizontally because it feels more like journaling. And so we have both those options. So we have it in a weekly view, or we also have a daily view because different people have different needs. And so even with our daily planner, it's undated because again, it's really about working for you in your life. If you are in an industry where you work on the weekends, you need Saturday and Sunday to be full days. And you might not need Monday and Tuesday to be full days. But if you're in a regular you know, corporate position, or if you're an entrepreneur and you're working Monday through Friday, you need Monday through Friday. You don't need as much on Saturday and Sunday. So really allowing that to work for you. I feel like when we customize our systems, and that's really what we talk about again and again and again in the book, right? Is this idea of let's create the system around you. Let's create it so it really plays to you and what is important to you. And so it really builds into that with the planner as well that you can, you can pick and choose. You know, do you want a monthly view and just notes pages? Great. You can create a planner that has that. Do you want a weekly view and meal planning pages because you like to meal plan? You can add those in. So really, especially with the disc planner, which is what we rolled out about two years ago, it makes it so the planner is truly modular where it's, uh, you have the ability to pick and choose. I'm a person who likes to have lots of notes pages have lots of notes pages. I'm a person who wants two different triple pocket folders, get two different triple pocket folders. And so you really can customize it so it fits you and the lifestyle that you have. We have to stop bending and twisting and turning ourselves to fit these very specific buckets of what productivity looks like or what life needs to look like. I think so often we live with, you know, what we're supposed to be doing or what we should be doing. And instead, Let's live our lives with what really fits what we truly want, what we truly desire, and what we truly want to see in our ideal life. Let's create that for ourselves. So the planner really builds into that whole idea of everything I talk about in the book, on my podcast, and you know, and the planner just is another extension of that. Yes. And I think it provides that framework for people. You mentioned the discs. So can you just quickly kind of like what that means? Because I think most people are going, what does that look like? Yes. I know because of course I have mine sitting right next to me. I love it. (laughs) But when you say the discs, do you mean the actual, the way that you were able to put it together? Yes. The discs are, you know, a lot of planners have the coils on the end. And instead of coils, we have solid aluminum discs. So they're aluminum. So they're really lightweight. It's what airplanes are made out of. So they're not going to bend. They're not going to twist. But because of the way that the pages work, you can easily pop the pages out. They just pull right out and then you can pop them back in. But one of the big things for me too is back to that whole idea we talked about with that Japanese tea ceremony. I wanted it to feel really luxurious and I wanted it to feel really good. We use really, really thick paper. So the paper's not just going to fall out. I mean, you can literally take one sheet, hold it up, and you can stand the weight of the whole planner while you're shaking it. Yes. So it's really designed so that it's going to hold up. Your pens are not going to bleed through. You're really able to, to enjoy the feel of the paper. That's a part of it. That's a layer of that ritual, right? A layer of that enjoyment that we want to have. So the discs are really the spine of it that allows it to all hold together, that allows you to change the pages out as you want. Whether you're a seasoned podcaster or just thinking of starting a podcast, you need to listen to Buzzcast from the folks at Buzzsprout. Here we go. Buzzcast covers everything a podcaster should know from marketing strategies and how to make money from your podcast to the latest and greatest tech and industry insights to keep you on the cutting edge. Follow Buzzcast by clicking the link in the description or go to buzzcast.buzzsprout.com and keep podcasting. I think that was the piece that I was most surprised by when I was looking at the website. I was like, I don't know exactly what those are going to look like. And when they came, I was like, how is this going to work? And you were absolutely right. It has held up. I mean, it's beautiful. It really is like the the cover that you have for it. It's just, it's my brand colors. It happens. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Um, So yes, I truly, truly love it. So you talk, I want to talk about a little bit about the book. 
So yeah, right of missing out. Mm-hmm. We always hear the term FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Yes. Tell me what you mean by joy of missing out. I know because I've read the book, but explain it to my audience. Yes, absolutely. Because I think you're right. So many people live in the FOMO, right? They're always worried about, oh gosh, if I don't say yes to every opportunity, it's going to pass me by and, and that I've, I've missed out. And it's this terrible thing. And we worry about what everybody else is doing. The joy of missing out is really this idea that there is joy, there is happiness already in our everyday lives, but we are so busy where our lives are so crazy and hectic that we aren't seeing it. It's so buried under the clutter and the noise. So we need to actively choose to miss out on certain opportunities. We need to choose to miss out on the busyness. We need to choose to miss out on saying yes out of obligation instead of out of desire or want, really. And so when we choose to miss out, when we make choices about how we're going to spend our day, that joy is able to sit there front and center. We're able to really pour ourselves into the things that are truly most important. And that's when we end up feeling truly happy. I feel like so many women run around chasing busy. We're chasing down a to-do list that's five miles too long. And then we end our day slipping into bed, and we think to ourselves, oh, I didn't get enough done. Oh, I should have worked harder, even though you were busy all day long, right? I mean, that is the most unsatisfying feeling in the world to think that you didn't do enough. And so really, the joy of missing out really is about let's, let's stop chasing busy. Let's stop trying to chase down that to-do list. Let's make a priority list instead. Let's, so let's make, revolve our day around the things that are truly important. And instead of taking 50 steps in 50 different directions, let's take five steps in one forward central direction so we can get to that life we want, that life we desire. That's when you slip into bed and go, today felt good. Today felt amazing. And here's the question I want your listeners to ask themselves. When is the last time you went to bed and thought to yourself, God, you did so good today. I can tell you right now, that's too long. It's far too long. And so that's part of my mission with redefining productivity for women is really let's end our days feeling satisfied. Let's feel successful. Let's pat ourselves on the back and say, nice work. Instead of beating ourselves up, telling ourselves everything we did wrong. Yes. So. In order to do that, you talk in the book about your North Star. Yes. And you talk a little bit about that. Yes, because I think it really is important to understand who you are. And that's why the first section of the book is this discovery section where it is, let's discover who you are, really, not who your neighbor is or the things that your best friend wants or what your mother-in-law wants for you. Let's figure out who you are and what you really want. And so I think a big part of that is what I call your North Star, which is your mission, your vision, and your core values. So your mission statement doesn't tell you what you do. It says why you do what you do right? So it's kind of the heart of your why. Then your vision statement says where you want to go. This is where I want to go with my life. And it gives you an idea of that destination you're wanting to get to and gives you something to shoot for. So we answer the question of why we do what we do and where we want to go. And then we use our core values, which tell us how we're going to get there. How are we going to make it so that we can do this and get to that destination? So what are the core values that you want to live your life by? And when you have this North Star, when you know why you do what you do, where you're going and how you're going to get there, it's so much easier to customize your productivity to really work for you. It's easier to be able to say no to the opportunities that don't fit you. And even more important, it makes it possible to say yes to the things that you truly do want to say yes to. Because here's the truth. It's not about saying no. It's about finding your yeses. It's about saying yes to the things that really fit you and that life you want. So having that North Star as your filter makes it so much easier to be able to discern what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Because here's the thing. It's really easy when it's black and white, when it's good or bad. It's when you have the good better and best options. It's when you get to that gray area that we find that we're piling more stuff onto our plate when really, when we're piling it on, we're not even happy about piling it on. We're saying yes to these things we don't truly want to do or that we're not excited about. Having that North Star, that's your guiding light. It helps illuminate your path so you know this is something that truly fits what I want to do or it doesn't. 
And I use that in my business. I use it for making decisions. I use it in my personal life. It really does help guide me to really understand what are the opportunities out there that I do want to say yes to and what do I want to say no to. I feel like it was the female perspective on the one thing that's by Gary Keller and Jay Passon. Mm-hmm. Because they talk about that whole, you got to figure out the one thing that's going to move your business forward. But right. they don't give the steps, I feel like, that will help us figure that out. Or at least for a female, they don't. Because yes. they say, you know, you just have your focus here and that's where your focus is. But we know as women that our focus isn't just one thing. Well, I think that's the thing is it, we're we're not just a worker bee. We are a whole woman and there's so many other aspects to us and so many other roles that we play, you know, whether that's wife or girlfriend or mother perhaps, or neighbor or best friend or aunt or all these different roles that we play. And I feel like this is where a lot of productivity books. And here's the truth. When my publishers, those first publishers were approaching me, they're like, no one has written a book for women on productivity. They're all written by men. Right. And I was, amazed. And I started thinking about, it. I was like, Oh my gosh, you're right. They're written by men and they're all about work. Yes. Right. And I wanted to write a book that really leaned into the idea of what women go through, what our mindset is like, what are the struggles that we have that are different from men. And I wanted to do the whole woman, right? Not just you at work, but also you in your home life, because in the book, we talk about this idea of you can bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan, but if the kitchen is burning down around you, it does you no good. We have to have that stable base of having a good, happy home life so we can lean into work, so that we can be our best version of who we want to be when we're growing our businesses or when we're climbing up the corporate ladder or whatever it is we want to do in that work sphere. We need to make sure that home life is running smoothly. Otherwise, that becomes this fire that is distracting us and keeping us away from doing our very best work. So I really wanted to lean into that whole idea of, productivity at home, productivity at work, and how we make that really work for us as a whole woman. Yes. And I think you did it beautifully. You truly did. Like there were so many pieces where I was like, yes, can we don't hear this from others? Because it is Thank not that all I want to talk about is the business side of things, which obviously if we're trying to move our businesses forward. Yes. yes. That is. But that's not our only role. We can't just have that shut off mode where I feel like sometimes men have that ability to do that because they have a wife that's doing all the things at right. home. That's her soul. Right. So it definitely comes across. You bring in that whole idea, just the examples that you gave, the target example with the blue shirt. One of my favorite <laughs> yes. examples. Love that. Um, it just truly did. It definitely connected across so many lines as someone that does work from home, that is running a business, but also is the mother that's got to take them to all the activities and everything right. and coach on the side and all the things. I mean, this is the thing is, is we, and it, the truth is we want to kill it in business. We want to, we want to grow our businesses. I, I'm a businesswoman. That's really important. I love working. Yes. I love business and I am not ashamed of that. I do love being a mom. I love that role that I play as well. And I want to be able to pour myself fully into my children and my husband when I'm in that home sphere of my life, right? I leave work every day around three o'clock and I go home and I take off my CEO of the office hat and I put on my CEO of the home hat. And when I go home, because I've created these systems, I'm able to really pour myself fully into my children and really invest in them And then when I go into work, I'm able to pour myself fully into my work and growing my business. And I think that is really the difference is it's, it's not about balance. It's not about spreading yourself so thin that you can't do it all and you're wearing yourself out. It's really about giving your energy to the place that you want to give it and then counterbalancing and then shifting it over and giving it your full focused attention. I think when we do that, we see our business thrive. We see our relationships thrive. We see ourselves thriving. And that's really what we want. I don't think anyone says, you know what? I want to start a business so I can stress about it all the time. And it keeps me up at night. And, you know, I'm on the weekend, I don't have time for my kids or I'm irritated that they have a soccer game because I've got work to do. No one goes into business because they want that. We go into business because we want to create a life for ourselves that feels good. We want to solve other people's problems, but we also want to, we want to be the boss of our own lives. And we're letting our businesses run our lives. And it's time to make that stop. 
Yes. And I love the way that you talked about systems because I think a lot of people will talk about systems and they'll talk about, oh, do a boom video and set it up for your business. But you talked about systems at home and you didn't talk yes. about it in a way where I hear a lot of even other women will talk about, oh, when it comes to home, just hire out, have people come in and do certain things. And you didn't just hand it off that easily. Right. Your example of how you train, set up a system for your children as far as helping with the laundry. That's a system that was, and it was like you said, you put that time into them early on so that now they're a little bit older and they're able to take care of it themselves. And they're doing it. (laughs) It's the greatest thing ever. Right. And this is the thing is, should you delegate things out? Should you hire out for things? Yes. It's not always feasible. Let's be honest here. Gosh, it'd be nice if we didn't have those stupid budgets, but we do. Right. And so that's the thing I hear from people all the time. Well, I wish, you know, it would be nice to be able to do that, but I can't can't afford it. I get that. I totally understand. Just like you, I have a budget as well. So we need to lean on our team and our team at home is really important to us. They, they can support us. We can support them. It's a very reciprocal relationship. And so investing in your team really can make a difference by having systems at home that run automatically that are free to do. We can really make that happen. I truly believe it because I, I do it in my own life. Yes. The other piece that stood out for me in home, and I don't want to try to, I'm trying, seriously not trying to give it all away, but this is <laughs> just hit me so hard when you talked about it was the traditions piece, especially mm-hmm. coming after the holidays. We're in January right now when we're doing this interview. And a lot of us were stressed because we had to do all these different things. We had to set up all these different traditions. Um, and the way that you talked about the traditions, would do you mind just sharing a little bit on that? Yes, absolutely. Because I feel like so often, I think traditions are yet another thing that we feel like we should be doing this. Or we we go on Pinterest and we see all the elf on a shelf stuff and we're like, oh, I need to be doing all this amazing stuff. And we're exhausted by it. And quite frankly, we make ourselves into the Grinch because we're not truly enjoying it. And what is the point if we're not truly enjoying it? Because I can guarantee when you're stretching yourself thin, trying to do all of those things, you're not really the person you want to be. You're snapping at your kids. You're, you're snapping at your spouse and your friends. You have very little patience. You're irritated with yourself. So let's really allow traditions to work for us. And I think this is the beauty of traditions is they are the best productivity hack out there because traditions happen automatically. They happen without us having to think about them. And so the one that I talk about in the book is my Christmas Eve tradition where, you know, I'm making homemade ice cream and we do roasted crab. And it sounds like this very elaborate, you know, kind of thing that we're doing, but it's not, it's super easy because I do it every year. And I have a little cheat card for myself. That's like, all right, this is what time I need to, to put the crab in the oven. And this is how we're going to make, I don't have to think about what recipes we're doing. I don't have to think about what present we're opening that night. I already know it's going to be pajamas and a brand new game for us to play games with. All of that stuff can happen automatically because it's a tradition and I can allow it to run on autopilot. But here's the trick. I'm not trying to do 5 million traditions. I'm getting to the heart of what is the magic for me of the holiday, right? What is the magic? And really the magic is the moment spent with my kids. I want it to feel special. So for me, my Christmas Eve tradition is not a lot of work, but the entire meal is eaten with our hands. I make this Caesar salad where it's big pieces of lettuce and you eat it with your hands and the crab is eaten. It's a mess. It is a huge mess. (laughs) Everybody loves it. It's so much fun. I don't do it on any other day of the year. And so it becomes special. That's really what we're wanting. We're wanting the memories. We're wanting that closeness with our family. We're not looking for that stress. So there's lots of ways you can use traditions, which are just essentially habits and routines, right? That we build into different things, whether it's birthdays or Sunday morning pancakes or, you know, what you do for, for Easter or Christmas or whatever that is, allowing those to really drive what you're doing so you can take the stress out of those holidays and, and stop like counting down all the different things you need to do and stop and enjoy and be present and thoroughly soak yourself into those holidays. So you're making the most of them and you're really taking advantage of what I call your million dollar minutes. The time that is so precious that if it were gone tomorrow, you'd pay a million dollars to get it back. Even if you don't have a million dollars, you would still try to, you would be willing to. And I think because we are cramming our days full of what we're supposed to do, what we should be doing, we're missing those moments, especially with our holidays, because we're trying to do all the things everybody else is doing. 
we have to stop. Yes. Do what is important to you. And I love the way that you talked about in the book that you choose it to be tradition about food because you enjoy that in the kitchen. Yes, I love I love cooking. So a lot a lot of my traditions revolve around what are we eating? Because I love to I love to cook. And to me, that is time for me to just Ah, I feel very zen. Now for you, it might be something else. I do not go crazy on wrapping presents. I choose like three wrapping papers. I don't do bows. I literally write people's names on a Sharpie on the wrapping paper. Other people get really into like the the wrapping process. Could do that if that fulfills you. Don't if it doesn't. Order takeout if cooking at home doesn't really work for you. Or do the things that really fulfill you. And I think that's really what's most important is truly letting go of those things that you feel like you're supposed to do or that you should do out of guilt instead of out of, oh my God, like I can't wait to cook the crab and make the whole spread. To me, getting to spend the whole day in the kitchen with, you know, not a lot of other things in my life going on. That's my only focus for that day. That is glorious. Other people, that sounds like a nightmare. (laughs) We're all different. So do what works for you. Yes. And I think you do a great job of explaining that in the book. So with writing a book, I have a couple, you know, an audience that is some are starting to think about, should I write a book? Is it, is it going to help me move my business forward? Yes. With writing the book, do you feel that it was beneficial for your business? How has it changed your business? Yes. I love this question. I'm actually, (laughs) I'm knee deep right now in um, mapping out book number two, because that manuscript is due this fall because that book is going to come out in October of 2021. (laughs) So I'm like knee deep in that process right now, asking myself those same questions. Is this good? (laughs) Is this beneficial? I have to be honest with you, writing a book and really doing it with intention, which is what I did. I really wanted it to feel intentional. I wanted it to fit what I talk about, what I believe in because I don't feel like I could ever offer a product, whether it was a planner or a course or, you know, a book, unless I really could stand behind it. And I truly believed in it. I think that's one of the first things you have to make sure of is don't write something that doesn't feel true to you because you're going to have to stand behind that. You're going to, you're the one who's going to have to talk about it again and again and again. And here I am talking about my book and I, I love it. I could talk about my book for days. So I would say that's the first thing to make sure that you're doing that you're really, when you're writing, it's not just because you think you're supposed to, oh, this is the next step or, oh, I see everybody else is writing a book. So I should write a book, write a book. If writing is something you enjoy, first of all, if writing is a chore, then I would say, you know, maybe do something else. You could do a podcast, you could do different things, you know, depending on what really works for you. But if you enjoy writing and you don't even have to be a great writer because you can get a really good editor to help you write. But as long as it's something that you're enjoying, I think it's good. What I think was really beneficial for me is it allowed me to really give myself even more permission to dive deeper into what I talk about. I feel like I learned so much more in writing my book. I started it off, you know, with an outline of what I was going to do. And then as you start diving into it, you start doing more research and you're looking for stories and you're talking with with other people because I pull a lot of other people's stories into the book. And you start to really understand the depth of what you know. And I feel like to me, it was like getting a whole nother degree, right? Writing this book allowed me to really dive into being an expert even more. And so I think that is one of the first benefits. Another benefit is, I mean, people start looking at you that you are an expert. You do know what you're talking about. It's another way of doing it. There's other ways though. Like I mentioned, having a podcast is another way to position yourself as an expert. Um, Having a really, you know, a blog that you keep up with on a regular basis. That's another way to become an expert doing Facebook lives. So don't box yourself in and feel like, well, I have to write a book because it is a big process. But for me, it was very beneficial. And I talk about this in the book. I got up every morning around 4.30 in the morning to write. And I'm not a morning person at all. My, my mom can attest to that from high school, <laughs> but every day at four 30, I didn't have to have the alarm. I was so excited to write the book. I couldn't lay in bed if I wanted to. I was so excited to get up, have that time to myself to be able to write. And that made a huge difference. So, um, again, it really is. If you're wanting to write a book, make sure you know your why. Go back to that North Star question. Is that really part of that path to get you to where you want to go and how you want to get there? 
And if the answer is no, it's okay to let this opportunity pass you by. It is absolutely positively okay. Find something else that does fit you and what you truly do want in life. Do you feel it also kind of leads your legacy, something behind all the stories? You told so many stories. And I think when I was writing, so I just finished my manuscript. We're in like the final edits, finally. Um, And the stories that came out that I, no one's ever heard. I I don't even, my parents will remember them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of them, they went back, back that far. It just feels like I'm passing on something to my girls to be able to say like, this is why mommy is the way that she is. (laughs) (laughs) Why I do things the way that I do within my business. And I want you to be able to take those things and apply it to your own lives. Yes. Well, first of all, congratulations on getting the manuscript done and being in the final stages. It's, it's something to celebrate. And I think so often we are so busy getting like the writing done or whatever it is we're doing. We don't stop to reflect and see, wow, I've done really good. So congrats on that, first of all. But it is, it's, uh, you know, we kind of touched on this before we started recording with the book. It's, it's not just words on a page. It's pieces of my soul yes. written on paper. It really is. There are stories that I dive into that I'd never have told other people. There are um, parts of my life that I share that I, I basically lay out on the table raw in a very raw state. And it does become, you know, part of that legacy and part of that, that story for my children of, of who I am and why I am the way I am and why I do what I do. Cause it all goes back to that. Why it all goes back to that North star and bearing your soul and, and doing all that becomes easier when you understand that North Star. When you're, when you're saying to yourself, this is why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for that woman who's going to read the words on the couch, sitting there on the couch, reading my words with tears streaming down her eyes or saying, oh, that's me. Or, oh gosh, I mean, this is one of the things I've been hearing from women. I get these messages. They're like, are you listening in at the conversation in my living room? Or I swear, how did you get inside my head? That's what I wanted. I wanted women to feel seen because I think so often we hide away in the shadows. We slip those things that we don't want to think about or talk about under the rug because we feel like they're too ugly to show to light. And I wanted women to see you are not alone. We all struggle with these things. We all think there are days that life is incredibly difficult, but you can overcome it. You can make those choices to create that life for yourself. So it really is, it's a, writing a book is a deeply personal experience that I did not realize going into it, how deeply personal it is. Definitely agree. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Tanya, where are the best places for people to get in contact with you. We're going to link to the joy of missing out your book. We're also going to link to the planner because like I said, it's sitting right on my desk right next to me. It's something I truly, truly love. Um, but where are the best places to kind of get in touch with you? Yes. I like to tell people the best place to get in touch with me is really on my website, tanyadalton.com, because you can find links to um, to the products, to the book. You can find links to my podcast there as well. I have a quiz on my site, helping you discover what your productivity style is and showing you what your strengths and weaknesses are. And then I've got different episodes of the podcast I send you to that, that kind of lead into each of those. Um, so Tanya Dalton, so Tanya with an O and a Y. Uh, TanyaDalton.com is really the hub for everything about me. Inkwell Press is where I have the planners and all of that. But um, truly, if you want to find anything and everything about me, that's the best place to go. Perfect. Well, we will make sure to link to that in the show notes. Um, I appreciate you taking the time so much to speak with me. It was just, I, I loved hearing similar thoughts that I've been you know, talking to my audience about, about being unique and stepping into their greatness and giving yourself some grace. I just appreciate you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Well, thank you. Like I said, I love talking about the book. It was great to chat with you. So thanks so much for having me on the show. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. I'm sure you heard some terminology that Tanya was using that probably sounded familiar to you. Being uniquely you is something that I have said time and time again is actually in my new book that comes out in the spring, something that I really truly believe in. Plus, she also talked about giving yourself some grace, which is the kindness piece that is also part of the book that I am publishing this spring. So as you heard in the beginning of the episode, I am doing my absolute best to make sure 
sure that I am also showing all of you some kindness, I want to be able to offer you 40% off my membership site. This is only available though till February 14th, Valentine's Day. I know it all ties in, right? But you have to use the code kindness at checkout. We're going to link to that in the show notes so that you can make sure that you hop over and sign up now so that you can take advantage of those prices. I appreciate you guys so much for taking the time to listen in. Please, if you are listening, send a screenshot, tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose. You can also tag Tanya um, at Inkwell Press and put it up on your Instagram stories so that we can both send you a message, let you know that we appreciate you listening in and can have that kind of direct conversation back and forth with us. I so appreciate you guys and I will see you all next time. 